Hi all you beautiful people. I'm standing in my home that I love so much with all my heart and um, thank you all you people who have uh, said nice things about my home because it's uh, very special to me and I just want to say a little bit about uh, this place. So we'll just go for a little walk through the mess. I'm on my own still, uh, which which you never really are. I just remembered that you're never alone because <laughs> there's angels and I mean all the life around me. So I'm actually not alone. I'm just the only human around for quite a few kilometres because people are at work and. Um, uh, well, we've talked about beauty and the importance of beauty and I think uh, mankind throughout all of history has uh, loved beauty, of course they love beauty. We just got, we've just gotten used to ugliness so we think we have to look at something ugly all the time. <laughs> but really, uh, Beauty speaks to our heart, to our true self, and it's home. And right here there's not only an abundance of beauty, but the scent here from these flocks. These purple ones is just so gorgeous. And it's nice and fresh here in the, in the morning light. So what I wanted to talk about was this beautiful house and not because it's my house but it's actually to honour the people who built this house. There are the little doves sitting on the thatch roof and I'll just talk a little bit about this and as you already know I grew up in a flat and knew very little about anything natural so I've learned all this just uh, by living here and just studying books and and see this is a oh, I can't remember the name um, we call it Binningswerk it's a Binningswerk house Binningswerk house which um, I think is called pole and beam in English and Just get into the photo, into the picture. Get into all the nettles here that I need to cut down pretty desperately. I have to get out with the shark thing. Otherwise I'm going to take over my garden. So, um, yeah, this is a, a traditional Danish house. And as you already know, uh, I've told you, we bought this uh, in 1990 um, and it looked very much like this um, so and it was built in uh, 18 in the 1860s and this land here is a very poor land so it was part of a bigger farm up up the road which is just 500 meters from here about and it was a daughter I think her name was Mary and she was given this land with her husband and I have a, a book with a, a man who made the history, wrote down the history and have beautiful photos from that time. Uh, I have, I'll show you one day, these very, very poor people who really, really, really worked hard. I mean, nothing like my life, which is just total luxury. Uh, and they built this house and as it was then, um, they, uh, people came to help, all the, all the people around here uh, they helped when there was a house being built and we've been told by people that at some time uh, during a period there were 16 people living here living in the house and the house was actually smaller than this because there was no upstairs we have upstairs too so that's just a bit of the story here but what people if you go to Sweden you'll see more wooden houses because they have a lot of wood but at this time in Denmark they had cleared so much of the forest so there was not much wood left. 
So it's really, I mean, it, it, I think it's so beautiful, this type of, this building type. But it's really out of necessity. They built out of what they, with what they had, as all natural people have done. So they had little wood, but that could give the structure. So down in the bottom here, uh, there are rocks, which we call sulsting. And so they were, would probably make a little, a, a bit of a, a sort of furrow, what do you call it? Um, just a, a um, yeah, a type of a hole all the way in the earth. And they've just put these stones on. So nothing is actually dug down in the original house. And on these stones, and I can show you one on the corner here, I'm sure it's here, uh, they would put the poles. So this is a not big, a big uh, architecture class, because <laughs> although my father was an indoor architect, uh, I don't know very much, but um, see if we can see the original stone that was put here, yes. See this would down here we have we have the original rock that was there and on that rock uh, oh this is getting a bit yeah anyway uh, on that rock they put the beam and uh, for people who had uh, the money or they would also put a beam all the way along the bottom here but some it's different different types of this way of building but they would always have the corner ones on these big rocks <clears throat> we'll just get back to the house if we can So they had to fill in, they had, they had pol poles on the, as you see here, and uh, then they had to fill in these, these spaces, and these, it's really more just, more or less, it's just filling it out, because the actual structure is in the, in the beams. And what they had then was clay, because in Denmark we have a lot of clay, so, uh, and some of these little holes in the earth we have the um, on this land and on most farms in Denmark had these little deep ponds and it's the human the people who've been living on the farms have dug these ponds uh, to dig out what we call maul which is uh, a clay like uh, sub substance that they would spread on the fields to nourish them because they had no fertilizer other than the animals uh, droppings but they could get the clay from those holes there because there are there is clay under this soil about one meter down it's just thick it's just thick clay just pure clay and uh, the history says all this land that we have all this topsoil in Denmark comes from Norway and Sweden it was from the ice age it was pushed down here and Denmark was more or less created so we have all their topsoil <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they would use clay and they would use straw and maybe they would make a mat of straw and they would put the clay onto that. And then onto the clay they use lime, so they paint it with lime and my husband still does that to keep it fresh, to, to um, not only fresh and beautiful, but it keeps uh, the moisture out. The lime, will it's breathable like the clay is, so it can all breathe but it keeps off the moisture, so you don't get a, a, a damp house. And uh, yeah, I just, I just love, I just love this home, and I love, I just uh, honor these people who have. Uh, so this is really to honor these people, and uh, we have made changes. So we changed the. We had thatch roof on both sides, but we have changed this so we have uh, made more space for ourselves indoors and put a grass roof on the other side, a turf roof, which is very much cheaper to do and has its own beauty. But the thatch roof is just very, very, very special. <clears throat> and in old times, they would, the poor people, they would grow rye 
and uh, the rye straw. They would use the rye for their bread. They make sourdough bread with the rye and they would also use it for feed but it's not so good for feed and with the rye straw they would they would make these roofs and they would do it all themselves so actually the woman who lived here before and the man before we came they made all their thatch roof themselves she would sit on the inside and he would be on the outside and they would just sew it on and on the top we have turf but uh, usually you would have straw Yeah, so uh, praise the Lord for these uh, hard-working people and uh, for the beauty of natural building, uh, how it makes these beautiful, beautiful homes using the natural, the local materials, uh, so special. So I feel so grateful, uh, yeah, and I just want to honour these people who have been here and farm this land and, and build this so and I know they're there somewhere so because uh, we're all still here whether we're on the earth or in heaven so thank you <laughs> thank you you people for for making this beautiful place so uh, take care all you youtubers and see you soon